on World News Tonight. WHO warning. Monkeypox has now been detected in more than 30 countries. Tonight, find out why endemic diseases are becoming persistent. Stunning verdict. Jury finding Amber Heard defamed her ex-husband in a 2018 op-ed on domestic abuse. Fighting inflation. With the rising prices around the globe, Germany comes up with an alternative money-saving measure. And Santa's Grotto. Finland is ready to stand down its elves and revert to its original function of being a bomb shelter. This is Adaderna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. In a boost for Ukraine, locked in a grinding struggle against Russia's invading army, the United States announced a new $700 million weapons package for Kyiv, which will include advanced rocket systems. They have the right uh, as a sovereign nation to defend their territory. They didn't start this war, the Russians did. The Pentagon's top policy advisor, Colin Call, said the U.S. will send four high-mobility artillery rocket systems to Ukraine, weapons that can accurately hit targets 50 miles away. They are part of President Joe Biden's new $700 million weapons package to help fight the Russian invasion, along with a host of other military equipment. Five counter-artillery radars, two air surveillance radars, 1,000 additional javelins and 50 command launch units, 6,000 anti-armor weapons, 15,000 155 millimeter artillery rounds, four MI-17 helicopters, 15 tactical vehicles, and spare parts and equipment. The White House announced the plan to give Ukraine precision HIMARS rocket systems after receiving assurances from Kyiv that it would not use them to hit targets inside Russian territory in an effort to avoid escalating the war. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said U.S. officials are taking Ukraine at their word. The Ukrainians have given us assurances that uh, they will not use these systems against targets on Russian territory. Uh, there is a strong trust bond between Ukraine and the United States as well as with uh, our allies and partners. I'd also uh, say that throughout this um, aggression, indeed even before, President Biden was very clear with President Putin about what the United States would do if Russia proceeded with its aggression, uh, including continuing to provide security assistance that Ukraine needs to defend itself against the Russian aggression. But Russia slammed the move, accusing the United States of adding fuel to the fire by supplying Ukraine with advanced rockets and said it did not trust that Kyiv won't fire them into Russia. The announcement came as Russian forces fought their way into the center of the Ukrainian industrial city of Severodonetsk Wednesday and appeared to be close to claiming a big prize in their offensive in the eastern Donbas region. WHO's Emergencies Director Mike Ryan stated diseases that typically circulate in animals are increasingly jumping into humans. This was the latest warning issued from the WHO as climate change issues rise. Outbreaks of endemic diseases like monkeypox are becoming more frequent. The World Health Organization's Emergencies Director Mike Ryan warned on Wednesday. As climate change contributes to rapidly changing weather conditions like drought, animals and humans are changing their behavior. The result, Ryan said, is diseases that typically circulate in animals are increasingly jumping into humans. So what we're dealing with is a lot of ecologic fragility. We're dealing with the animal-human interface being quite unstable and the number of times that these diseases cross into humans increasing and then our ability, or unfortunately, that ability to amplify that disease and move it on within our communities uh, increasing. Ryan also pointed to an upward trend in cases of Lassa fever, an acute viral illness spread by rodents endemic to Africa. And Ebola outbreaks, Ryan said, used to be years apart. Now it's months. So I, I think this is a lesson. These diseases will continue to emerge. They will continue to pressure. They will continue to sp cross the species barrier. The question is, are we in a position to collectively respond? Ryan's comments come amid rising cases of monkeypox. The illness spreads through close contact, causing flu-like symptoms and a distinctive rash. On Wednesday, the UK's health security agency said an outbreak of the viral disease in England appears to be spreading from person to person and without links to travel. 
WHO head Tedros Adnam Ghebreyesus said there have been 550 confirmed cases of the viral disease in 30 countries outside of Africa where the pathogen is endemic. Investigations are ongoing, but the sudden appearance of monkeypox in many countries at the same time suggests there may have been undetected transmission for some time. Still on Monday, the WHO said it does not believe the outbreaks outside of Africa will lead to a pandemic. Record high inflation caused for the most part by the war in Ukraine has led to Germany introducing measures to ease the burden on consumers, including massively discounted travel on public transport. Europeans are enduring record high inflation and it's forcing some authorities to take action. On Wednesday, Germany introduced a new measure to help consumers get by. Locals can now buy public transport tickets that cover travel across Germany for just €9, Euros, or a little under $10 a month. Germany's government has also lowered taxes on fuel to fight high prices. Some petrol stations in Germany have already lowered their prices to the delight of many customers, but others were more sceptical about the tax relief actually reaching them. The measures are due to run for three months until the end of August. Inflation in Germany rose to 7.9% in May, largely due to supply chain issues caused by the health crisis and the conflict in Ukraine. Myanmar has been in chaos since last year's coup, with conflict spreading across the Southeast Asian country after the army crushed mostly peaceful protests in cities. Schools flattened. Hospitals and health centers destroyed. Villages burned to the ground. Civilians massacred or forced to flee their homes. At first they came to arrest people, but then they shot at everyone. We ran away the same day. They know that we're civilians. They're just shooting at civilians. Amnesty International says these are examples of war crimes committed by Myanmar's ruling junta against the civilian population. A report released Wednesday cited military airstrikes and ground artillery attacks, quote, reflecting its signature policy of collective punishment of civilian communities. Our civilians were arbitrarily detained, subjected to torture, in some cases enforced disappearance and extrajudicial executions, uh, a very clear pattern of looting and burning of villages. Um, and all of this, of course, amounts to war crimes and likely crimes against humanity. The rights group says that between last December and March, the military has ramped up its onslaught on villages along the Thai border, retaliating against the Kareni people who have mobilized against the military's rule. Monitoring groups say that more than 1,800 civilians have been killed in the junta's crackdown on dissent since last year's military coup ousting Aung San Suu Kyi's civilian government. The findings follow a UN report released in March that made similar conclusions, documenting what it called ethnic cleansing. The U.S. has accused the junta of genocide for its massacre of Rohingya Muslims, a million of whom have fled the country since 2016. A Virginia jury ruled that Amber Heard defamed her ex-husband Johnny Depp, a verdict that caps a dramatically widely watched six-week trial detailing the former Hollywood couple's chaotic relationship. Tonight's stunning but mixed verdict delivered an overwhelming win for Johnny Depp. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, yes. The jury siding with the actor, awarding him $15 million, agreeing he was defamed by ex-wife Amber Heard's Washington Post op-ed. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven by clear and convincing evidence that Ms. Heard acted with actual malice? Answer, yes. <laughs> While Depp's supporters celebrated outside the courthouse, inside the unidentified jury of seven deliberated for 13 hours, finding both sides defamed each other, also awarding her $2 million after one of Depp's attorneys called her accusations of domestic abuse a hoax. Heard and her team making no comment as they left court, but releasing this blistering statement. I am heartbroken that the mountain of evidence still was not enough to stand up to the disproportionate power, influence, and sway of my ex-husband. I am even more disappointed with what this verdict means for other women. It is a setback. 
Depp, who was not in court today but said to be watching from the UK, writing he had always been seeking the truth. The six-week trial, every bit the Hollywood drama. So we decided to have some lines of cocaine and some whiskey for breakfast. A sordid, salacious, and scandalous affair. A star-studded but toxic marriage that turned volatile when fueled by drugs and alcohol. A catalyst for claims of mental, verbal, and physical abuse. But the jury never believed any of Heard's accusations of abuse. He just hit me over and over and over again. So With Heard and Depp both taking the stand for five days, lobbying accusations and denying they were the aggressor. Nor have I ever struck uh, um, any woman um, in my life. The most private details of their marriage became public fodder, alleged photos of a comatose Depp after a bender, a bruised herd after a fight, and trashed hotel rooms and homes with threatening text messages and audio recordings all entered as evidence. But you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. Yes or no? As the case and its billions of views went viral, captivating a global audience and even making a mockery of the allegations, Depp online and outside the trial seemed to win in the court of public opinion as he was cheered and heard was jeered. But tonight, the real jury has rendered its decision, a case where there may be no true winner after a starring role in a trial neither actor wanted. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now moving on to the desperate search for baby formula in the United States. President Joe Biden announced new overseas shipments are on the way. And for the first time, he acknowledged that he didn't become aware of the depth of the problem until well after it began. Tonight, President Biden acknowledging he did not know about the formula crisis for two months following the closure of the critical Abbott manufacturing plant in Michigan. I became aware of this problem sometime in after April, in early April, about how intense it was. But moments earlier in his meeting with top manufacturers... We knew from the very beginning this would be a very serious event. We could foresee that this was going to create a tremendous shortage. Did the CEOs just tell you that they understood it would have a very big impact? They did, but I didn't. FDA officials were alerted to potential problems at the plant in October when an Abbott whistleblower sent FDA officials this 34-page document alleging that lax practices, including regulatory violations, were consistently overlooked. The FDA did not send a team to investigate until January 31st. Abbott shut down the plant on February 15th and issued a voluntary recall two days later. That same day, the FDA put out a warning to parents. Now, President Biden says he didn't become aware until April. But the president not publicly commenting on the crisis until May 13th, when he faced bipartisan criticism for a slow response. There's nothing more urgent. Late today, the White House press secretary saying administration officials were working on the problem for weeks before the president says he was briefed. We did everything that we can from the moment uh, that we learned about the recall. I would have to talk to him about about the April date. In that meeting with major manufacturers, Abbott was noticeably absent. A senior administration official telling the company at the center of this crisis was not invited. Abbott is currently cooperating with the FDA to reopen its shuttered plant in Sturgis, Michigan, set for this weekend. This comes after President Biden announced new emergency formula flights from the United Kingdom and Australia expected to hit shelves later this month. And it can't come soon enough for parents like mom Celeste Donahue in Northern California. She's driven up to Oregon to find the formula she needs for her 10-month-old baby boy. The bottom line is we can't do this. We, there should be formula on the shelves in the store. Hurricane Agatha leaves a trail of destruction across southern Mexico, killing nine people, damaging buildings and disrupting electricity and telecommunications services and rescue efforts are still on the way. Hurricane Agatha has left scenes of devastation across southern Mexico. The death toll from the storm has risen to nine, state authorities in Oaxaca said on Wednesday, and it could rise further as four people remain missing. 
Agatha made landfall as a Category 2 hurricane on Monday afternoon. Packing winds of 105 miles per hour, it touched down near the beach town of Porto Angel. Local residents in the area have seen their homes and businesses devastated. This restaurant owner said a lot of her utensils, including two fridges, have been lost. Our investment is gone now. Everything went to the sea and it affects us a lot. Others are returning to find their homes completely destroyed and are facing food and water shortages. There's also a lack of fuel, electricity and telecommunications services. Some tourists are stranded. Yeah, I can't get in touch with my family. There's no service or signal or Wi-Fi or internet or anything. So the last message that I sent to my family was on Saturday. Um, yeah, just to say that there was a hurricane. And so they know that there's a hurricane, but they don't know where I am or anything uh, since Saturday, so four days. The US National Hurricane Center warned on Wednesday morning there was an 80% chance that a cyclone would form in the Atlantic from Agatha's remnants in the next 48 hours. CEO Elon Musk shows some strict signs as he demanded that Tesla employees must return to the office for in-person work at least 40 hours per week or they'll be let go. CEO Elon Musk has put his foot down at Tesla, demanding that employees return to the office or leave the company. That's according to an email sent to staff and confirmed by two sources at Tesla. One of Musk's followers on Twitter posted another email that the billionaire apparently sent to executives, saying, quote, anyone who wishes to do remote work must be in the office for a minimum, and I mean a minimum, of 40 hours per week or depart Tesla. The email also said Musk would, quote, review and approve any cases where employees could not meet the minimum. Tesla did not respond to a request for comment, and Musk himself could not be reached for comment. But he did respond to the tweet that included the internal email, saying, quote, they should pretend to work somewhere else. Tesla joins a wave of companies mandating a return to office for employees. While some big employers have embraced voluntary work-from-home policies permanently, others, including Google, are betting that it is best to push in-person interactions among colleagues. Musk's work-from-the-office push could set him on a collision course with management at Twitter, the company he has agreed to take private in a $44 billion deal. Back in March, Twitter said offices would be reopening, but employees could still work from home if they wanted to, with CEO Parag Agrawal tweeting, quote, wherever you feel most productive and creative is where you will work. And that includes working from home full-time forever. Outside Buckingham Palace tomorrow, England will begin celebrations for the Queen's 70th year on the throne with a traditional military parade. For weeks, rehearsals have been going on for Seamus, the Irish Guards Regiment mascot dog. We all get nervous the night before a party. So imagine being the Queen tonight. For 70 years, since her coronation, she's had one role and the UK has had one Queen. Tomorrow, outside Buckingham Palace, a front row seat to history. I'm 70 years old, sleeping on the cobbles in London. The Queen may be too frail to attend many events, like tomorrow's traditional military parade, Trooping the Colour. Rehearsals have been going on for weeks, including for one special dog, Seamus, the Irish Guard's regimental mascot. Like all our families, there are inevitably tensions when the royal family gathers. Harry and Meghan reportedly arrive today. But for the next few days, Queen and country will come together, and children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, with smiles and happy hearts, and the quiet acknowledgement that as a beloved relative gets older, time is precious. Welcome back to World News Tonight, and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. For the next four weeks, North Korea will lead the UN conference in disarmament in Geneva. This comes despite the regime's recent missile launches and rising speculation of a possible nuclear test. At least four people have been confirmed dead, 41 others injured, with one of them in critical condition after an earthquake hit Yan City in southwest China's Sichuan province.
An 18-year-old suspect has been indicated on charges he gunned down 10 black residents in a Buffalo, New York supermarket and will make a court appearance. Three young white lions have found a new home at a Venezuelan zoo. Originally from South Africa, the lions arrived last week from a zoo in the Czech Republic and are part of efforts to improve zoos and parks across the South American country. The World Health Organization has cast doubts on North Korea's claims of progress in the fight against a COVID-19 outbreak, saying it believes the situation is getting worse, not better, amid an absence of independence data. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you have missed to watch any of the stories we had tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight with Santa's Grotto coming back to life in an off-season to act as a bomb shelter as the Russian war escalates. Stay safe and have a good night.